Hey there everyone, it's Jen the Board Game Librarian. And I'm joined, we're doing a Kickstarter preview today. Woo, yay! And I'm here with Matt. Hi everybody. The Dice Chucker. And possibly a pesty poopy over here. Yeah, you can already see. Yep, it's witching hour, folks. Um, <laughs> today we're taking a look at Quests and Cannons by Short Hop Games, designed by Eric and Shannon Geller. This is a one to six player game. 20 minutes per player, ages uh, 14 and up. So, yep, all right, it started already. Here we go, cattail, right in front of your face. Man. There you go. Um, so I had initially made contact with Eric, who lives here in New England, and he was looking to highlight some um, New England content creators, which I really super love and appreciate. Um, and um, <laughs> He, when he described the game to me, he described it as pick up and deliver. And I said to him, oh no. Thank you, Eric, but no thank you. Um, because if you followed us for a long time, you know that Matt and I are not pick up and deliver fans. Um, so Eric and I talked a long time about what I don't, we don't in particularly like about pick up and deliver. Um, and he was telling me about quests and cans. So this game showed up. It's a pretty big sized box. It's not um, like your 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter box. It's oversized. Comes with this very large, very, very large rule book. And um, a modular board that you set up based on the number of players. Uh, Matt and I played a two player game. We do not play the 2v2 or cooperative game of this. Right. Um, and Knowing that you didn't like pick up and deliver, what, what did you what did you think of Quest of Cannons, Matt? Uh, well, first off, um, this is probably the first pick up and deliver game I've enjoyed, and that's because the turns are speedy. Um, I remember playing a game of uh, I think it was Star Wars Outer Rim, mm. where uh, we were playing a four player game, and three of us just kind of had a a quick turn of movement. And one guy ended up having like a, a, a five minute turn because he kept getting into adventures and moving all around the board. And, and that was kind of the other thing I didn't like about Pick Up and Deliver is, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes, like let's say you pick up a mission and it happens to be two or three spaces away from you and I'm all the way across the board. And, you know, for, for us it wasn't really our jam. But the thing with Quests and Cannons was it was so streamlined I guess is the word I want to use I think Eric had mentioned to me that one of his inspirations was Merchants and Marauders um, so this really does yeah. take Merchants and Marauders and boils it down oh, to, to a much shorter experience um, one of Matt's the, poor departed games that yeah. I never cared for <laughs> but we know someone who has it so if I want to play it with him no, I'll let him know um, the artwork is fantastic. Yeah, I think for me that was another draw that it was so colorful. It really yes. popped when you put it on the table. Um, I know that this is a preview copy, but the components were fantastic. Um, you know, dual layer boards. Yeah. Uh, everything you know just thick fit cardboard. perfectly. Thick cardboard. Uh, Big glossy some, rule book. Yes. Can I talk about the rule book? Yeah. Go this ahead. rule book is fantastic. Um, I, I eventually going to be making a, a top ten things you need in your rulebook video, um, and this one did really well with it. So, first off, it's it's a huge rulebook. It's in size, not in thickness, but in size. But everything is so well laid out. It's story time, everybody. I mean, this right here. Have a list of all the stuff. And pictures. And pictures. <laughs> and number. And examples. <laughs> and this one has it. And everything that I had a question was answered almost immediately in the rule book. And it's, I hate to, to say it, but I mean, this is, um, what this rule book does that others don't is it spreads out its rules in like a large print mm. instead of like a GMT rule book where there's three columns and an outline form. One dot two. Don't get me wrong, GMT. I love your games, but the rule books are rough. That's fair. 
So I mean, this and pictures, They're yeah, like examples. Pictures. pictures would be great. Um, no, this this rule book does really well in teaching you how to play the game. So there's that. So in Quest vs. Cannons, you take on the role of an adventurer in this made-up universe that Eric and Shannon have made. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all anamorphic uh, characters, super cute. Um, I love in the back here, like, I think one of us playing, like, a rabbit, rabbit cat, cat rabbit wizard thing. It's adorable. I don't care what it is. Um, and you have your ship, and off you go. You start off in one of the designated areas. You have three action points, mm -hmm. uh, two movement. Um, you, have, you can move, you can gather resources, or you can attack another player. That, you should that's say it. You should <laughs> say, too, that... Um, we should say that you you agree on a point level. Yes. So I think 15 for the short game was a 20 for mid and 25 for long or something along those lines. Might have been up to 30. Sitting here with the rule book, not looking. Matt, yeah. Matt. <laughs> um, and you are given a map clue to start off with and um, a couple of sails. And your sails allow you, you to like? move more spaces. Uh, everyone's player does have its own special ability. But... Um, so you are going along, there are dangers in the water that you are attempting to avoid, there's um, sea monsters, kraken, yeah, 15, other things. 15, 20, 25. There's also outposts and trading posts that you can go along and um, <coughs> upgrade your ship. Quests. Qu you get mentioned quests. quests in the game since it's in the title. Um, you get cannons. Um, <laughs> And on most of the tiles, there were resources that you can flip over and then with an action collect as well, too. Yes. And put in one of your cargo hold spaces you have available um, that you are looking to fulfill your quest. Yeah. Um, one of the nice things uh, about this was that I could get the resources easily. They were well spread mm -hmm. out, not clumped in one section. That could have been just the randomization that we had made for that game. Could be. Um, a lot of, like, with... Um, some pick up and deliver games you need to go and, and find this resource and then you have to deliver it across the board and you can never find the resource and by the time you do find the resource the other person has um, clicked in the end game yeah so, i think that helped for us because the board is pretty compact the first time i saw it i thought it was rather large and i was uh like oh this is gonna take take a bit to play mm. no actually it was once you started moving it was very easy to get around mm. Um, oh, because when you move, you you have uh, your, your movement amount, I believe, on, on the character sheet. And then you have sails that you can move in extra space. Yep. So that was good. Um, in a two-player game, Matt and I attacked each other... Twice. I, twice. Uh, so I can anticipate with a larger player count, you're going to do that a lot more. Right. Um, so it was pretty conflict-free in our game. He loves this game. And he's... Wow. Um... And I would say, um, so if you'd like conflict, I don't know if you're just two-player conflict games are not your thing, but this might, this, this might work. This might work for you. Because you can actually just avoid each other the whole time. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I liked, um, was, um, when we talked about the artwork, the graphic design, um, I also liked the... Just how lightweight this was. Yes. We talked about this quite a bit, Matt and I, after we played. Mm. This is probably one of the more approachable pick-up-and-deliver games that has a sprawling board. I know that a lot of people are going to say that uh, Century Eastern Wonders is a very approachable uh, pick-up-and-deliver, but you know, if you're looking for something bigger, something with more, more depth, um, this is a great entry level for that. Because you know, when we first played Merchants and Marauders, there was so much coming at you. Firefly, there was a lot coming at you. Um, so, this one really kind of fit the bill for us perfectly. Yeah, I would say so. I, um, you know, there is, you know, you know, like there is with anything that's random in terms of how cars are shuffled, there were the times when, you know, you would go to an island and pick up a quest and you happen to have all the things. And that island was like the next island over, or you were close to it. I'm not sure that that can be avoided, though. No, I don't think so. But it didn't bother me because the game was so speedy. Yes. You know? Yes, agreed. You weren't, it wasn't like Wasteland. You had to chug all the way across. 
the board. Wasteland. Uh. Well, so I think we were expecting something else with Wasteland. Um, I think it's a good game for the right group of people. People love it. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Cool. <laughs> uh, so, what do you think? Um, we else people should know about this, Matt. Uh, the theme is great. Like I, like you said before, the artwork really pops. Um, it's going to be one of those games when it's all set up and you've got everyone around. That there's, It's so colorful, people are going to stop and, and look at it and ask what's going on. Um, and then they'll find that the game is really um, a nice streamlined to pick up and deliver. Uh, we did not try co-op, um, and we did not try the 2v2, because mm -hmm. we've pretty much been two-player, COVID and all. But, yeah, yeah I think I think for, for me, it was a, a nice surprise. I agree. And we love surprises in this household, so, and I always like it when I'm proven wrong of sorts when it comes to something like this, um, or something defies my expectations. So this is great. I think it's coming to Kickstarter in September. We're filming this in July, so take a look for this. Um, Eric and Shannon have been doing a whole bunch of um, like Tabletopia or BGA uh, where you can play uh, beforehand. Um, there might have even been a tournament this weekend. Um, so check that out if you are interested, and we'll, see, we'll catch you next time. Yeah. We gotta go feed the cat, so. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.